Hi, this is Joel Phillips, Director of Technology at Strategic Advisor Board and CEO of ProShark, a digital marketing agency and software development company. Um, we are doing a series called Tech Tip, where we have conversations about anything in the digital space, including digital marketing, digital media, digital presence, or digital footprint. Uh, we started yesterday with good websites versus bad websites, and we ran out of time. Uh, we're trying to keep these in between three and five minutes to keep them short enough to um, not invade your time, but with enough information that they're valuable to you. So that said, we're going to continue in good websites versus bad websites today. We left off yesterday saying that uh, optimization uh, performance, website performance was critical. We left off saying that your customer journey is critical, being able to get customers from point A to the final purchase. But there's a lot of different factors in what makes a good website and a bad website. So we talked, we started talking about uh, the design of the website. Uh, you can get very inexpensively, you can get template websites. You can do them yourself with really nice templates. So the one thing that we see that's that probably has the most negative impact regarding websites is people who do them themselves and they put up poor resolution images. They put up, um, they don't use necessarily a template or they change the template to the point where it doesn't have the flow and design that it was originally intended to have. Uh, we would say that if you're going to do it yourself, that's fine. Find a website that you really like the look of and without copying it, make sure you follow the same tenants. Um, one that you typically like is probably professionally done and you can mimic some of the design standards that those websites have without copying. It's very important, please. We at no point in time do we ever recommend that you copy or plagiarize somebody else's work. Um, that said, design and appealing capture of the eye is first and foremost. You have about 1.5 seconds to capture somebody's attention when they look at your website. So A, if the website doesn't load in three seconds, especially on mobile, then you're going to lose that customer. So make sure that you have a website that performs. Then when they get there, you have about a second and a half. You have about in between a second and a half and probably three seconds for to capture their attention. So that means that your header has to be really strong. Your, your statement has to be compelling enough to get them to stay on your website. Because if you look at your analytics, most sites you'll see about a six second uh, hang time where people wait for the site to load, they look at it and then they abandon it, they're out of here. So it's really crucial that you put that compelling message right there in your hero. You have a good solid high resolution picture. You have a compelling message that you put up there that says, hey, here's what I, who I am, what we do, and here's why you should stay. And from there, if you can get them engaged, then it's really important. And this is where customer journey comes in. It's really important that you keep them engaged, that you that you take that customer on a compelling journey through the website, through the homepage, what you offer down below. And it's not just all about sales. It's not about, um, you know, here's my product. Okay, buy it. it. It's about who you are as a company. It's about what you do, how you make a difference in the world. Social cause is a big, um, is a big driver in today's website economy or ecosphere, I should say. And who you are as a company is almost as important as there's lots of products out there. So who you are as a company helps people belong to your community. And we'll get into community in our next conversation, but it's really important that your website promotes a feeling of community because no longer can you depend just on, and we'll also take a look at advertising and things you can do to attract customers and leads, but appealing or just selling a product doesn't work anymore. It, it now needs to be where you involve people in your community, evolve them, involve them in who you are, why you do what you do, and um, 
if you can create that loyalty among your consumers, then you reduce the need for paid advertising. You reduce the need for outreach um, and, and people just start coming to you. And that's the best, that's the best option when it comes to websites and, and how you market your website is to have people just come to you. So that said, that's uh, all the time that we have today. So hopefully that helps helps you understand what makes a good website or the difference between a good website and a bad website. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Tech tip at proshark.com. One of our guys is happy to, guys or girls, one of them is happy to sit down with you and discuss your website, what you're trying to do. And even if yours is good or bad, I mean, it's, we don't have any problems with helping people out because our goal is to develop an ecosphere where people understand what makes a good website, what makes a bad website, and what makes uh, a website successful. Because at the end of the day, that's the goal of everyone who creates one. So thank you. I appreciate your time and look forward to our next session. Have a great day. Bye.